and calling them to Allah and remind them about Allah and calling them to Allah and remind them about Allah Azza wa Jal. And the more he calls them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the more they become stubborn against the call of Allah. And the more he reminds them about the Tawheed, the more they get against the Tawheed. And the more he reminds them about the favors of Allah upon them, the more they turn against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more they mock and make fun of Hud alayhi salam. O oh, Hud, stop wasting your time. Whether you warn us or you don't warn us, it will make no difference to us. They told him, we'll fix you up. So he says, okay, you fix me up. All of you, the first thing I want to tell you is I am free from this polytheism that you are engaged in. And now that I've told you that, I want you to bear witness. Now do what you want. Let's see. Come plot against me, all of you together. When you come, you will see what will happen. Allah will destroy you just as you come. They were quiet. Imagine they were frightened. You told us a punishment is coming. It can't come. Bring it. We want it. Come. Allah says, we sent them such a powerful wind. And that wind destroyed absolutely everything. Complete destruction. Everything. Anything that this wind will pass will make it like dust. Allah Azza wa sent on them the wind. This wind will grab them. Will take them up to the heavens and with their heads first on the ground. Where's your power now? Oh, people of Ad, oh, people of Ad, those who thought that are strong and powerful, no one can defeat them, no one can destroy them. What happened to your power today? What happened to your strength? At one stage, you even said, Allah can't even do anything to you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-khalqi ajma'in Nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa tabi'in Wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen Now as time passed and the children of Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam Generations began to pass They were talking to their children of, of how lucky they were As being from amongst those who were saved in the ark with Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam And we said that Nuh alayhi salam had three children who survived and one which was the fourth one who disbelieved in him and he was destroyed through the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal Kanaan was the child or the son that was destroyed in the flood and he had three, believe, three believing children he had Sam Ham and Yafith and from Sam and Ham and Yafith the rest of the children of mankind come back to those three. From Sam, the Arabs and the Israelis come from. The Arabs, the Arab and the Israelis come from Sam. And then you've got Ham, where most of the Africans come from. And then you've got Yafith, where most of the Russians and the Chinese will come from. From Sam, from Sam, a tribe by the name of Ad comes from. They come from Sam. After the flood and after Noah and his children were saved, the whole world were believers. There was no longer disbelievers. When a time came, the whole world were disbelievers. They were all mushrikeen associates, pagans who worship or associate and someone else with the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when the flood came it was only muwahideen only those who believe in Allah azza wa jal and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the children of Sam and Ham and Yafi start to spread around the world and they were all muwahideen including as I mentioned the children of Sam and when Nuh alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam after the flood he settled somewhere in the north of Syria and the south of Turkey. Nuh's children start to spread from Sham. And when we say Sham, you are referring to Syria, Lebanon, Palestine and Jordan. And at the time of Ad, as I mentioned before that time, from the time of Nuh, 
all the way just before the time of Ad, they were all worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're all believing in the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jalla. There was no such thing called the worship of idols. No such thing called associate another Lord with Allah Azza wa Jalla. Until the Qawm, until the tribe of Ad came and Shaitan started to whisper in their ears to start coming up with statues, things they could see so they could worship. And then the worship of idols took place again at the time of Hud alayhi salam in the tribe of Ad. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent... Allah Azza wa Jal, He sent Hud, Prophet Hud alayhi salam to guide the people of Ad to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given the people a lot. There was a lot of wealth, there was a lot of physical power and strength, but they began to worship idols once again. They began to worship stones and statues. So now we find the children at the time they were, as they were growing, they were growing bigger in size. They were tall, huge. Allah makes mention subhanahu wa ta'ala that these people were granted greater size than the people of Nuh. They were given more power than the first people. And they were granted gardens. They had so much. Allah makes mention of it in the Quran. These were the people of Ad. Ad, where is it? It is the name of a place. Between Oman and Adan, between Oman and Yemen, close to Hadramaut, that area in the southern Arabian Peninsula, Middle Eastern region, these were the first Arabs. Pure Arabs, the other pure Arabs. Not all Arabs now are original Arabs. The original Arabs are Ad and Thamud, the other original Arabs. The Arab that came after Ismail, including Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and the rest of Quraysh, they call them Arab Mustariba. Like so-called Arab or imitation Arab, if you want to say. Okay? They are not originally Arabs, but they came into the Arabs and became like Arabs. But the original Arabs are from Ad and Thamud. The original Arabs come from Yemen. And they used to speak the Arabic language. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to them a prophet by the name of Hud. He was an Arab. And sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was once speaking to Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he was telling him about the prophets and the messengers and then the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said from among the prophets and the messengers there are four prophets and messengers who are Arabs and the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said Hud was an Arab Salih was an Arab Shu'aib was an Arab and he told Abu Huraira and your prophet was, is also an Arab so from all the prophets and messengers being sent, 124,000 prophets and messengers, these four Arab prophets. And what happened? They were so happy because Allah gave them wealth. Allah gave them strength. And they began to indulge. Over and above indulging, they forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they started worshipping things, stones and items. Shirk, engaging in shirk. So let's listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Iramadatil Rimadil Lati Lam Yuchlaq Mithluha fil Bilad. Allahu Akbar. Iram. That il Imad is referring to either the height of the people as though they were tall pillars. Lam Yuchlaq Mithluha fil Bilad. Like them were not created prior on land. Which means they were so huge. Allah says, we didn't make anyone like that before. Number one. Number two is, the homes they used to make were also huge, like large pillars. Like that, there was never before on earth. So both their stature, their structure, and what they used to make and build in terms of homes. And both of those are correct because for a tall person, you need a tall home with a ceiling that is very, very high. Because he needs to be covered. He's not going to come bending into his home. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after making mention of how they used to worship asnam, asnam meaning idols. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the story firstly in Surah Al-A'raf. Straight, Allah says, Wa ila adin akhahum huda. And to the people of Ad, we sent their brother Hud alayhi salam. Why does Allah say akhahum? Because he was from amongst them. He was one of them. And this is why nearly all the, the nations that were sent prophets that prophet was one from amongst them whom they knew from the time he was born 
so that they could not say this is an outsider, he's a foreigner, he's a stranger and so on. They knew this person and he came up and then he warned as a messenger and he was always known as truthful and honest and all the good qualities and so on. So Allah says, he says, Hud alayhi salam said, قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُهُ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ He told his people, O oh my people, worship Allah alone without associating partners. For indeed, there is no deity worthy of worship, no one, none worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُهُ You don't have anyone you can worship besides Allah. This shows us that the issue of polytheism and shirk is the prime issue that all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with. Because that was the trap of shaitan. The biggest thing he wanted to deviate man with is the issue of association, of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he would laugh at the man and he would laugh at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, you see, I told you they won't worship you. They will either worship someone else or they will worship with you other things. So this is why all the messengers, you open the pages of the Quran, they all said, مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُهُ You don't have anyone worthy of worship besides Him, the one who made you. أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Do you not fear? Do you not, not have any consciousness in you? So what did they say? قَالَ الْمَلَأُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ قَوْمِهِ إِنَّا لَنَرَاكَ فِي سَفَاهَةً وَإِنَّا لَنَظُنُّكَ مِنَ الْكَاذِبِينَ First things first. The, the disbelievers and the haughty from amongst his community, they were all powerful people, wealthy. They began to say, you are foolish. We see that you are a foolish man. You're a fool. You're telling us not to indulge. What's wrong? It's our wealth. We are living. It's our life. Let us do what we want with whatever we want. And we'll build as we want and do what we want. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they were also amazed that how can a man come to us? If Allah wanted to send a messenger, he could have sent an angel. Why did he have to send a human being? And so this is why in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of how they said, مَا هَذَا إِلَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يَأْكُلُ مِمَّا تَأْكُلُونَ مِنْهُ وَيَشْرَبُ مِمَّا تَشْرَبُونَ This is just a human being like all of you. He eats whatever you people are eating and he drinks whatever you are drinking. There's no virtue for him over the others. And they continued saying, وَلَئِنْ أَطَعْتُمْ بَشَرًا مِثْلَكُمْ إِنَّكُمْ إِذَا لَخَاسِرُونَ If you are going to follow a human being just like you, then you will be losers. Look at how foolish the statement is. Now there is something important in this story of Ad. They debated a lot with Hud alayhi salam. And also they always went back to their cronies and their people and they began to tell them, look, we told him this, we said this, we said that, and he doesn't have an answer. Not that he doesn't have an answer. Common sense is an answer. You know what else they said? أَيَعِدُكُمْ أَنَّكُمْ إِذَا مِتُّمْ وَكُنْتُمْ تُرَابًا وَعِظَامًا أَنَّكُمْ مُخْرَجُونَ هَيْهَاتَ هَيْهَاتَ لِمَا تُعَدُونَ Is he promising you that when you die and you have become decomposed that you are then going to be resurrected far, very far, is that which you are being promised. It cannot be a reality. Imagine, they are saying, how can he tell you that when you go down and you're going to be decomposed, that you're going to come up? My beloved brothers and sisters, the lesson I learn and you learn from this. Sometimes we claim and we know, we believe, that we are going to be resurrected. But the way we operate in our lives, as though there's no day of judgment. The way we carry on with all our bad ways, we never bat an eyelid sometimes. We never sit back to think, but I'm drinking, I'm clubbing, I'm committing adultery, I've got all these bad habits, and at the same time, I'm claiming that there's a life after death. How on earth can that happen? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about what else they said. 
إن هي إلا حياتنا الدنيا نموت ونحيا وما نحن بمبعوثين. They told each other, look, this is just a life, enjoy it as much as you can. We are alive and we will die and that's it, there's no resurrection. إن قولوا إلا اعتراك بعض آلهتنا بسوء. We are not uttering anything except that some of our gods have caused this man to become mad because he's gone against our gods so the gods have become angry with him these stones have become upset with him and therefore they have inflicted him with a mental disease and now he's a mental case that's what they're saying why were all these statements let me tell you why because these rich wealthy people who had lots who were big huge no sickness they were massive people they used to dwell in huge dwellings. We're going to get to the type of dwellings they had. They were scared that we are going to have to change our whole lifestyle because one man is telling us something. So rather than changing their lifestyle and securing the akhirah, they decided to secure the dunya and lose the akhirah. So now they started saying this man is a madman and this man is like this and he is possessed only so that the others would not listen to him. Because if one, two, five, ten, twenty, fifty people started listening, he would start getting a base and he would be able to attack. He would be able to become victorious over these. No. So what did they decide to do? Allah speaks about them in the Quran. Allah says, وَإِذَا بَطَشْتُمْ بَطَشْتُمْ جَبَّارِينَ فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُونَ Hud السلام, told them that when you seize, when you want to punish someone, you you destroy them totally. You seize so powerfully as though you are tyrants, which means they used to kill off those who were weak and those who tried to go towards the message. And they used to kill off those whom they considered a threat. Nobody could tell them anything. Why? They were huge, powerful people and they were in the majority. Allahu Akbar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned them through the prophethood. But now I want to spend a few moments describing to you their houses. Allah says, أَتَبْنُونَ بِكُلِّ رِيعٍ آيَةً تَعْبَثُونَ وَتَتَّخِذُونَ مَصَانِعَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَخْلُدُونَ Are you those who used to build on the mountains, on every high place, you had your monumental home? and palace. What is a monumental home and palace? They built palaces on top of the mountains, huge palaces which they did not live in. It was only known that mountains, that house is for this man, that house is for that man, that house is for this man. Those were all on sand dunes and on the little mounts that they had. They were not living in them. So Allah says, are you building extravagantly these homes that you're not living in, you're not going to stay in them and you becoming so indulged that you're forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahu Akbar and on top of that the next verse says and then in the valleys you build the little houses that you are going to live in in such a manner that you, you think you're going to live forever you have taken these fine homes for yourselves as though you are going to live forever. Allahu Akbar. So imagine the houses. These people, they owned the mountains. They carved up at the top of the mountains a place for them to live. And not for them to live, in fact, for them to boast, to brag. That's my home. That one's my house. That one's the other one's house. That's the uncle's house. And so on. Allahu Akbar. They were the first in this type of engineering. And because of that, why does Allah mention it? Because of that, they had this sense of arrogance that because of this invention that they have an advanced technology, they ruled the world. They thought, this is what they had in there, that they are the rulers, they are superior to everyone else. The first thing they did was, they rejected him and they rejected his warnings. Why did they reject him and reject his warnings? They were stricken with this uh, disease of superiority. If they had followed him, it meant for them that they are now going to be equal to everyone else. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about their size 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاذْكُرُوا إِذْ جَعَلَكُمْ خُلَفَاءَ مِنْ بَعْدِ قَوْمِ نُوحٍ وَزَادَكُمْ فِي الْخَلْقِ بَسْطَةً Remember, Hud alayhi salam is telling his people, remember that Allah has made you the successors of the people of Noah. Allah has made you the successors of the people of Noah. May peace be upon him who were destroyed completely. You are the successors and Allah has given you greater physical strength than them. So fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they started spreading a rumor that this man here, he's doing it for some ulterior motive. He wants some money. And this happened all the time. When someone came with goodness and related the message, they said, this guy must be making a lot of money out of this. That's why he's there. Allahu Akbar. Why? Why lay, lay accusations? So Hud alayhi salatu wasalam says, Ya qawmi la as'alukum alayhi ajra. إِنْ أَجْرِيَ إِلَّا عَلَى الَّذِي فَطَرَنِي أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Oh my people, I am not asking you to recompense me in any way whatsoever. My reward lies with the one who made me. He was told that our forefathers did not come with what you have come with. So why should we listen to you? How can you go against your forefathers? Same thing. قَالُوا أَجِئْتَنَا لِنَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ وَحْدَهُ وَنَذَرَ مَا كَانَ يَعْبُدُ آبَاؤُنَا Are you telling us to worship one Allah and to leave these things that our forefathers used to worship? What lesson do we have in that? My beloved brothers and sisters, we've said it and we will repeat it. This is why Allah has repeated it in the Quran. Whatever we are doing, if it is right, Alhamdulillah. If it is wrong, no matter how many generations of our forefathers have been doing it, it will be wrong. So we should know when the truth comes to us, even if generations before us have been indulged in wrong, we should surrender to the truth. We will be securing our Akhirah. And these people, they had this idea of superiority and inferiority. Islam or the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, submission to God, which, which Hud alayhi salam came to them with, meant that they have to now be equal to anyone else. And that your only superiority is in your following of God's laws and your moral well-being, your justice, your equality, not your, not your uh, discrimination. They couldn't accept that. So they used their forefathers as an excuse. This is our forefathers. This is who we are. Just like Nuh alayhi salam, Mood alayhi salam also taught the people about worshipping one God. Ad, they went back to the worship of idols and they started worshipping statues. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about these types of people who constantly go back to erring, creating other gods, spreading injustice on earth, changing the teachings of their prophets and their messengers. And Allah uses in one of the verses in the Quran, one of the surahs in the Quran, in Surah Al-Dhariyat, a word, a rhetorical question, a rhetorical question, a question that is so deep in meaning, yet at the same time, it's a, a question of almost sarcasm to the people as though do they not understand Allah says these teachings they teach what is it to them is it like every time some of them die they their children just inherit their belief of them they just inherit it is religion an inheritance that is left behind by their forefathers that they should take it like property or, or, or like property or some kind of wealth a person a father has left behind or a mother religion is not something of inheritance therefore it does not belong to a particular people because this idea that you are born from parents of a particular belief makes you of that belief is false it's untrue it's unheard of and the prophets never taught this the Torah and the Injil and the Quran and the Zams, the Zabur 
all these four revelations never mention that religion is to be inherited. So, Hud alayhi salatu wassalam, he warns his people and he tells them, وَاتَّقُوا الَّذِي أَمَدَّكُمْ بِمَا تَعْلَمُونَ أَمَدَّكُمْ بِأَنْعَامٍ وَبَنِينَ Fear the one who has blessed you with so much. He has blessed you with what you know. You know what he has blessed you with. Fear him. Be conscious of him. Appreciate those blessings. What were these blessings? They had everything. They had palaces. They had houses. They had white roads. They had children. They had wealth. They had respect. They had strength. They had armies. They had everything. They had everything. They were one of the tribes that Allah had given them. Where He had not given many tribes in the world. Where Allah had given them everything. Power, strength, health, wealth, families, respect, honor, civilization, knowledge. They had all that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Hud to remind them. To thank Allah for what I had given you. Thank Allah Azza wa Jal for what Allah Azza wa Jal had bestowed upon you. Don't associate someone else with the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship Allah and only Allah. And Allah has blessed you with so many beautiful gardens and so many springs that are gushing forth. It's like paradise here. So be thankful to Allah. My beloved brothers and sisters, when Allah has given you, it is not a sign that He is happy with you. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken away from you, it is not a sign that he is angry with you. No, it all depends on the condition of your heart. You are a content person. Even if you don't have anything, Allah is pleased with you. And if you have everything and you are still content, then it is a sign of goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us more and keep us content. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how Hud alayhi salatu wasalam warns his people. Then they told him, they started arguing, they started debating. They told him, Ohud, stop wasting your time. Whether you warn us or you don't warn us, it will make no difference to us. Have you ever heard people say that? Tell us or don't tell us, it doesn't make a difference. We're not bothered. Allahu Akbar. So Allah says, these statements were uttered at that time. And do you know what happened? They said, these tales that you are telling us about Nuh, because he told them that Nuh alayhi salam's people were destroyed just before you. He says, these are tales of the people of the past. As for us, we are stronger than them. We have much more than them. We cannot be destroyed. Allahu Akbar. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu Akbar. They uttered one statement which was very blasphemous. Very blasphemous. They were haughty, arrogant on this earth. They rejected the truth. They were despising those on the right path. And what did they say? They said, there is nobody more strong than us. No one. Who is there who has more power than us? This was a question they asked. So Allah responds immediately. أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّ اللَّهَ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُمْ هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُمْ قُوَّةً Do they not see simple calculation in their brains that the one who created them, the Allah, is more powerful than them? They're asking a question, who is there more powerful than us? Allah says, can't they see that whoever made them is more powerful than them? Did they forget who gave them? Did they forget who created them? Did they forget who sustained them? Did they forget who gave him this strength? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But pride, pride, pride is what led them to do what they did. Pride is what made them do what they did. And that's the same pride that made Iblis not to prostrate to Adam alayhi salam. Pride, the mother of diseases. Pride, the mother of all sins. Pride, ya ikhwani. Pride. And that's why with pride, 
the Prophet والسلام, he says, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر. The whoever has an atom way of pride would never enter the paradise. Allah Azza wa Jal would never let anyone who has an atom weight of pride to enter the paradise. Let him be whoever he is. Let him be whoever they are. Pride would never lay you into the paradise. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hud alayhi salatu was salam. Now he, after this challenge, they made a challenge, one more challenge. They told him, bring what you are telling us. You told us a punishment is coming. It can't come. Bring it. We want it. Come. So he says, look, Allah knows best. Allah will bring it when the time is right. But they kept on challenging him. No, we want to see. Bring it. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he told his people, Hud salam got up in front of all his people and he says, Oh my people, I am making Allah bear witness and I am making all of you bear witness that I am free from all that which you have associated as partnership with Allah. So now, if you want to plot against me, all of you get together and let's see what you're going to do to me. Now this was a challenge the other way around. They told him, we'll fix you up. So he says, okay, you fix me up. All of you, the first thing I want to tell you is I am free from this polytheism that you are engaged in. And now that I've told you that, I want you to bear witness. Now do what you want. Let's see. Now this was a challenge. The messengers never normally told the people, look, come attack me. He says, Kiduni Jami'an, come plot against me, all of you together. When you come, you will see what will happen. Allah will destroy you just as you come. This is what he said. La tumdirun, you won't be given respite. So they, they didn't come. Allahu Akbar. They didn't come. As big as they were, it was the first crack that appeared. First crack. Because they said, hey, you know what? Something. He must be right. Maybe. We don't know. Whatever. Allahu Akbar. Imagine they were frightened. Because he says, come. So that means deep down they knew the truth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when he told them that, they were quiet. Now he raised his hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala surni bima Oh Allah, assist me because they have now belied me. And Allah responded immediately. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qala amma qalilin la nadimin. Don't worry, Hud. Very, very soon they will regret everything. When that revelation came, you find the Nabi is happy. Now he's okay. So what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affected them with a drought. Now their gardens began to dry up. For some years there was a drought. And when their gardens began to dry up, they used to go to their gods, their stones, and ask the stones, we need rain. We need rain. And who told them, وَيَا قَوْمِ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيَزِدْكُمْ قُوَّةً إِلَىٰ قُوَّتِكُمْ وَلَا تَتَوَلَّوْا مُجْرِمِينَ Oh my people, if you really want rain, there's two things you need to do. Repent and turn to Allah. Istighfar and Tawbah. Istighfar means to seek forgiveness. And Tawbah means to return to Allah. So when we say istighfar and tawbah, the difference between the two is, one is to ask Allah's forgiveness, and two is to now walk on that path and return to Allah. So Hud alayhi salam says, it's not good enough to say, Allah forgive me and you're still on the path. Seek forgiveness and come on the path. You see the clouds will come immediately and there'll be beneficial rain. Beautiful rain will fall for you. And you know how strong you are? Allah will grant you more strength over and above the strength you already have. They were already the strongest that were ever created by Allah. The strongest nation created by Allah. 
the nation of Ad. Just remember what I've said because at the end we're going to need that statement. The strongest nation created by Allah was the nation of Ad. And Allah says, I will grant you increase if you seek forgiveness. But no, they went back to their gods and their idols. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we sent them. What did we send them? A huge cloud. And when they saw it, they were happy because they were healthy people. When they saw this huge dense cloud come towards their valley, they were so happy. They said, what did they say? Allahu Akbar. They said, wow, this is a beautiful cloud. At last it's coming with rain, a dark cloud. They were happy. Allah says, بَلْ هُوَ مَا اسْتَعْجَلْتُمْ بِهِ رِيحٌ فِيهَا عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Nay, this is in fact what they were asking for. It is the punishment of Allah coming with wind. No rain is going to fall. So it started. It came, the cloud came, and the wind started blowing. What type of a wind was it? Allah says, فَأَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ رِيحًا these were the days of a bad omen according to them when the wind started blowing they said this is a bad omen so Allah says okay days of bad omen call it what you want days of bad omen cold freezing ice cold wind with a howling sound a howling sound and then as it came it started gaining strength Anything that this wind will pass will make it like dust. Destroys it. So the people of Ad saw this. They ran into their palaces, into their houses, into the mountains. They saw, they thought, we'll be protected here. Barabbak, your Lord is great. And His punishment is severe. Allah Azza wa sent on them the wind. This wind will grab them, will take them up to the heavens, and with their heads first on the ground. Allah Azza wa Jal saved Hud and those who believed with Hud alayhi salam. Although he was, he was sitting in the, him and the believers in the middle of the punishment. But that wind, as Allah says, will destroy everything by the will of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give the permission to that wind to get near Hud and those who believed with him. So the wind will come and move away from Hud. And those who believe with Hud, and Hud was in a shed with some kettles. And Allah Azza wa even protected those kettles from that wind. So the wind will come and gas around Hud and the believers of Hud and that shed that, was Hud, that Hud was in and will destroy everyone else. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَمَّا عَادٌ فَأُهْلِكُوا بِرِيحٍ صَرْصَرٍ عَاتِيَةٍ سَخَّرَهَا عَلَيْهِمْ سَبْعَ لَيَالٍ وَثَمَانِيَةَ أَيَّامٍ حُسُومًا فترى القوم فيها صرعا كأنهم أعجاز نخل خاوية الله أكبر الله says we sent عاد ريحا صرصرا we sent them such a powerful wind for eight days and seven nights and that wind destroyed absolutely everything complete destruction everything Allah asks Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم a question he says فَهَلْ تَرَى لَهُمْ مِنْ بَاقِيَةِ These were the most powerful people. Do you even see a remnants of them? Pharaoh, there's a sign to prove he was there. Madai and Saleh, the people of Thamud, there is a sign to prove they were there. The others, the people of Noah, there may be signs that they were there. These people, not a sign. Go and hunt the globe. If we were not told the story in the Quran, we would never even have archaeological evidence to prove that anything happened. Nothing. And why did Allah do this? Some of the historians, Muslim historians explain and the ulama explain that one of the reasons is they were too big, too strong. And Allah says the stronger you were when you defied us to think you were the strongest, we showed the rest that you are not only destroyed, but now vanished from the face of the earth. Where's your power now? Oh people of Ad, oh people of Ad, those who thought that are strong and powerful, no one can defeat them, no one can destroy them. What happened to your power today? What happened to your strength? 
At one stage you even said, Allah can't even do anything to you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how he saved Ad, meaning he saved Hud alayhi salatu was salam and those who believed. Allah says, وَلَمَّا جَاءَ أَمْرُنَا نَجَّيْنَا هُودًا وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ When our command came, when our instruction came, we saved Hud, we saved those who believed with him, and then we destroyed the rest. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that they will have a punishment, even in the Akhirah, that is far greater than the punishment that they have tasted today. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran in so many different places that he has kept these stories for us as a lesson and once again believing in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Tawheed took over the land and people became Muhyiddin until Hud alayhi salam passed away may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding until we meet again wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad subhanallahi bihamdihi subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك